Welcome back to Whistle Thicket. So I am a little bit nervous right now. I am about to see if my three apple trees that I self-grafted, if they survived or not. About six weeks ago, I took a apple grafting class at the local ag center. And after I did my grafting, um, for the aftercare, I was told to place the trees in a plastic bag and then you have to wrap the roots in a moist paper towel and then I was told to put the roots and the trees in a dark place for four to six weeks. So I've had these trees in a plastic bag, the roots are wet and it's been in my closet for about a month and a half. I am a little bit nervous. I don't know if the fruit trees are alive or not. It's my first time trying to do my own um, self-grafting with a fruit tree. So I'm going to open up the bag in a few minutes and I'm hoping for the best. And it was a fun class to take and I think I'm going to take it next year. It is an art and a science to be able to graft. The first thing we need to know is why do we have to have our fruit trees grafted. So it is true you do not have to have your tree come from a fruit tree that's been grafted. It is very common though you can grow an apple from seed even if you get an apple from a store like this apple. But if you grow a seed apple from the store you have no guarantee what type of apple will be made and will be produced. So if we think back to science and biology, if you think about a Punnett square, um, most organisms get half of their genes from their mother and half of their genes from their father. So there's a 50% chance that a copy of each gene is going to be passed on to that offspring. So if you have dominant genes, you have recessive genes, you never know exactly what genes are going to be passed on to the offspring. So even in this apple that has seeds in it, if you were to plant all of the seeds in this apple, each seed would not be exactly the same as the others. Um, if you think about a larger family that has four or five siblings or more, um, each child is different. It's the same thing with an apple tree or any other fruit tree. So if you graft a fruit tree, it's basically a clone. It kind of acts like a parasite. So if you graft a fruit tree, you are more or less guaranteed that that apple is going to be the apple that you took the sign wood from. There are a lot of reasons why an orchard or a large farm will have their trees grafted. The first one, like I mentioned already, is that you want to guarantee that the fruit that you want to sell is the fruit you are, you are going to grow. There's, a, there's several other reasons why it's important to graft trees. First, the rootstock is usually a much harder species. Um, for apple trees, it tends to be a crab apple rootstock. You can also get a large variety apple tree on a short variety dwarf or semi-dwarf species. So if you have a semi-dwarf or a dwarf species, it's much easier to harvest your fruit in the late summer and fall. Um, but a, a um, large scale apple tree can be anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50 feet. So it's much easier if you use a dwarf stock or a semi-dwarf stock. If you're using a, a dwarf stock, you will need to have that stock will have to be, um, I guess, braced its entire life because they tend to have shallow roots. There are some other, I guess, there's a few other advantages and a few other disadvantages of having a dwarf root stock. So a dwarf fruit tree will first have fruit sooner, but a dwarf fruit tree will also have a shorter life expectancy. I think it's about 15 years. So you get fruit sooner, but the tree is also not going to live as long. 
so now that we've talked a little bit about why we have to have our fruit trees grafted, I'm going to open up my trees and I'm going to see if they are alive or not. So let's hope for the best. I have three fruit trees that I grafted. They were all on um, semi-dwarf rootstock. And this is a good sign. I have leaves on the top of all of my self-grafted fruit trees. So I'm going to take that as a success. There are a lot of types of apple trees out there. There are so many old heritage breeds you can find. Um, where I live, there's stories of a single apple tree that is named after a family or even a single person. And, it's, and that tree is known as that person's tree. Those trees were probably from an open source pollinated tree. It, uh, they were probably not grafted. So the way we got a lot of these heritage breed apples is because the trees will open pollinate. But if you're going to do large scale production of apples, you need to have an apple that people actually want. Um, people are very fickle. The types of apples we eat today are not the types of apples we ate 30 years ago or 50 years ago. So taste change. That's another great um, purpose of grafting. If you are a large grower, if your apple tree was popular five or six years ago and suddenly tastes have changed, then you can use a graft on the new popular apple and in a year or two, you will get fruit. I'm going to show you my roots now of the apple trees. I don't have any hair. Okay, this is really cool. When I had my three apple trees six weeks ago in early March, there were no roots at all on these root stocks. So as you can see, they've grown into each other and now they have very healthy roots. I'm going to try to flip them upside down real quick. So these trees want to grow. They are going to grow. They all have leaves on them. I am a little worried about one of the trees. Looks like this is my Virginia Beauty. Its leaves are not doing as well as, as, as uh, the rest of the fruit trees. But I'm going to give it a chance. This is what I'm going to do for my aftercare. I am going to plant these three starters in these pots behind me. There's a little bit of store-bought soil with just a little bit of fertilizer in there that came with the soil. But most of this soil is from my property. It's compost. Um, we've done a pretty good job with making compost even better than I thought um, our compost would be. Um, if you're going to graft your own fruit trees, it's definitely a labor of love. This is a long process. I am going to keep these in their um, pots back here for the rest of this year and then I'm going to overwinter them either inside the barn or a shed if it gets too cold and then the next spring I am going to plant them. So this is a two year process to just get them in the ground. So I'm going to plant these guys and this is also important. I am going to keep them in the shade for the next couple weeks. These leaves are new leaves. They have not been exposed to sunlight. So they don't have a lot of chlorophyll. They are weak. They will get burned. So you do not want to put your self-grafted fruit trees in the sun for quite a while. I'm going to keep them in the back of the house and they will always have shade. And then in maybe a month, I'm going to put them on my front porch where they will get full sun. So thanks for joining us. I'm going to plant my success and hope for the best.